Hello, everybody. Hello, YouTube. Hello, art history enthusiasts and visual culture aficionados. It's me again, Miss M. And I'm back with yet another video. Guess what? Guess what time it is, you guys? It's time to shine. <laughs> we are on Understanding the Shining Part 11 in this video that I'm doing right now, right here today. I know I said I was going to do the non-alcoholic beverage video before I did this one, but the non-alcoholic beverage video is going to be a little bit more involved than I thought it would be. So I figure let's do this. And this this one, this uh, Understanding the Shining uh, episode, part 11, it might be a little bit shorter than the other ones. It might not be. Ain't no telling. Okay, and I'm saying that because, let me just open up the PowerPoint presentation. Um, I've only got 73 so slides, and for me, that's like not a lot of slides. However, just because it's not a lot of slides doesn't mean I'm not going to have a lot to say. But I don't know. I don't plan this. There's no script. There's no outline. There's no nothing. It's just me talking and looking through these images and seeing what I notice. Uh, or what I don't notice. I don't know. Um, it's going to be that exchange or the continuation of that exchange between Danny and Halloran with the chocolate ice cream. Um, and that's where we ended last time, at the beginning of that dialogue between uh, Dick Halloran and Danny Turrence uh, when he has the chocolate ice cream. After, and this is right after Halloran shows Wendy and Danny the dry goods room um, where we have all of those goodies. We have all those wonderful canned uh, foods and dry foods like crackers and peanut butter and cookies. Well, no, we haven't really seen any cookies, but we will later. Things just appear in that room. Oof. Oof. I don't know where to, I don't know when to begin, where where to begin, where to start. Listen, I've been re like I I've been saying in my last couple of videos, I've been reviewing this movie like you wouldn't believe. I've been sniffing stuff out like an old hound dog in this movie. Stanley did a number on us. Okay, Stanley let me tell you something before I even like I'm I'm gonna do my church announcements don't worry <laughs> like like you're gonna miss those but <laughs> but no 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 I've been reviewing this movie I've been paying special attention and when I say I've been going through this thing with a fine tooth, tooth comb baby yes I have been and Stanley 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 <laughs> I mean, this man's genius and his attention to minute, teensy, weensy, itsy, bitsy, uh, eensy, weensy little details is so astounding that it's hard to even wrap your mind around. I know the naysayers are going to say, oh, it's just a continuity error, or oh, that's just what they happened to have lying around on the set at the time, and you know, it was a big production, and he can't be in control of that many things. Listen. Listen, naysayers. If if you happen to be watching my video, you know, for the purpose of, I don't know, getting your getting your jollies and 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 laughing at me and saying that I'm disturbed, and that I'm that I'm noticing shit that ain't there. Uh uh. Uh uh. No. Sit down. And shut up. And and maybe listen and and you might learn something, naysayers. Okay. Because we're not at that point in the video or video. I keep, I, I I don't know why I always say that, in the movie. We're not at that point in the movie. We're about to be, not in this episode, not in uh, part 11, but part 12. Y'all, now I'm talking to my good people, my wonderful people, my people that have been with me for this past year. I've been doing this shit for the past year, and I thought I'd be farther along by now. I thought I'd be done with the movie by now, and a year later. Psh, you know, I got a job. 
Uh, no, I got two jobs. And I got to I got to go to that grocery store and buy carrots and celery and sanka. And, <laughs> and so on and so forth. But um I'm get like I said I'm going to try to pick it up a little little bit quicker now. Do one every week until I'm done with the movie. And even when I'm done, let me switch off my TV so I don't get any problems. Um uh but even when I'm done doing all of this um not not frame by frame but almost frame by frame analysis of the visual of of how the movie looks i'm still going to have more stuff to say oh yes i am um like i said i'm i've been working on kind of a breakthrough that i think is a breakthrough but i got to turn it over and over in my head a little um because i like i said stanley did a number on his audience on his viewers Okay, the teensiest, weensiest little details in places that you would not expect them. That some people would call continuity errors. And I, what, I, what do I say to that? I say continuity errors, my ass. That's what I say. No, no, Stanley planned this thing out to the, to the last m millimeter. Okay. Okay, please, please keep that in mind. If you don't believe what I have to say, that's okay. You don't have to believe me. I wouldn't have believed me a year ago. No. And now we got, I, I showed you that little in the, in the Looney Tunes, um, rum break. I, I showed you the radiator behind, in, in the hallway behind Halloran's, not Halloran's, sorry, Ullman's office, um, in the niche or the, the indentation in the wall. Uh, and the radiator might be the source, or, you know, not literally the source of the false window or the impossible window in Ullman's office. But it's um, maybe, I don't know how to put this, because there's no way to put this in words. Maybe it's ideologically the source of the f impossible window in Ullman's office. B because, again, the David Lynch eraser head connection the radiator is a it's all it's 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 a character basically in eraser head there's a lady who lives in there and she tap dances and stomps on those spermatozoons that fall from the ceiling oh, on that stage and everything oh my goodness and uh, i'm i just i i'm having a hard time keeping this to myself i want so much to tell you I don't know what to do, you guys. I don't know how to... Should I do like in Greek mythology and, and dig a little hole in the ground and whisper it into the earth? And, and I mean, even that won't stop it if, if that's what I do. But listen, listen. Um, I thought... I, the thing I, fo I found this past week when I was talking about all that Sanka and everything, the thing that I found inside the hotel, on the interior of the hotel, that proved to me beyond a shadow of a doubt that Stanley Kubrick was a sneaky genius. Um, that, uh, that, that alone kind of like uh, overwhelmed me. The stuff that I found tonight when I was doing this, doing my screenshots for the PowerPoint presentation for you guys for this part 11, and then I looked around in the movie a little bit more and I said, oh Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, he did it again. He did it again. And this other thing is on the ex external, on the exterior, excuse me, on the exterior of the hotel. Oof. Can't wait to tell you. Cannot wait to tell you. Um, but anywho, let me, let me just go over here. <laughs> this is the latest painting of the day. I know it's not a painting. I know it's a photograph, but it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. It's a sky uh, in India. These beautiful, like it, the, the the clouds look like they were done with with a brush. They look like brush strokes. Absolutely lovely. I already we already talked about this. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm still on the quest for peaches. I have frozen blueberries, but I need to get some peaches. Probably have to break down and get some frozen peaches. Um. So. I can make the David Lynch smoothie finally. While I'm at it, 
here we are looking at my community page. Please check it out. I'm going to put some more like art his my art history playlist on here. I think the next track on the art history playlist should be something like maybe Bob Dylan, um, Isis, and or uh, Metallica, Creeping Death. I don't know. Not sure yet. Maybe both. Why not both? Um, and today we're going to be very heavily consulting Script Slug, the, the, the post-production script for The Shining, the Halloran and Danny part. Okay? Um, so let me get the church announcements out the way. You guys, while I'm, while I'm saying this, just go ahead and like the video. Get that out the way. But I want to express my appreciation. Uh, new viewers, thank you for being new. Returning viewers, thank you for returning. Subscribers, all 342 of you, thank you so much for subscribing. And please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video if you know anybody who might like this nonsense. Uh, and now with that, with that out the way, all right, um, let me get to it. Let me find uh, 11 minutes in. Jesus, let me get to it. And I'm sorry if you don't like me talking about my little discoveries. You really don't have to watch. Again, I got a nasty comment that one time and I said, mm-mm, no. Anyway, this is where we left off last time. So this is the beginning of minute 30, of the 30th minute. And we're going to do minutes 30 through 33 um, in the movie, my copy of it anyway. So here's the ice cream talk between Halloran and Danny. So Halloran and Danny are having their little tete-a-tete, -tete, right? The, that, that, I guess that in French it means like a, you know, conversation, a direct conversation. Uh, and like I said, Danny just got done eating his ice cream. And he's got these little chocolate ice cream, like, splotches on the corners of his mouth, okay? And... Here we are in the kitchen, Halloran. And I misspoke this past week. I said when um, Wendy was opening that big-ass can of fruit cocktail that there are only two, uh, two place settings at the table. No, there are not. There's three. But the, the third one is kind of impossible because the way the ch table is constructed, it's kind of impossible for anybody to sit at the head of that table because there's like a crossbar down uh, connecting the two legs of the table on that side so it would be really awkward for like a grown-up person to sit there and take their meal you would have to lean in pretty pretty deep um, to get your head over your plate so you don't make a mess of your clothes but um, that's where Danny is sitting actually he's, he's sitting on the short side of that of that um, wood big wooden table in the overlooks kitchen Okay, and he just got finished eating his chocolate ice cream. Like I said, the person that I, the, the group of people that I showed it to one time, uh, I asked them, why do you think Danny asks for chocolate ice cream when, when Halloran asks him what flavor? Uh, and the lady said, because Halloran is black. That's why he wants chocolate ice cream. At the time, I thought that was crazy. Now, several years later, well, not several, a couple of years later, I see where that person was coming from, and I agree with them. And again, this was a black person who said this, not me. I'm not black. Uh, but the, the lady who said this, she was adamant. She said, no, no, that's why he asked for chocolate ice cream, because Halloran is a chocolate-colored man. And I said, okay. And everybody else was like, mm-hmm, sure. Now I 100% agree with that person. They were right. They were, in my opinion, they were right. And there's more of that later on in the in the in the movie. So stay tuned, you guys. Uh, anyway, they're having their little conversation where Halloran explains what The Shining is, and um, him and his grandma used to talk without ever opening their mouths. And look at the way they're mirroring each other. Okay, so Danny is sh sitting on the short side of the table, okay, and then the kit, the, I don't know, this prep area or whatever this kind of area behind Danny is, that's, it's all in stainless steel behind him. He's got his hands clasped together. Halloran has his hands clasped together. Um, they're not sitting across from each other. They're sitting at a right angle from each other. Uh, and then there's, again, one of these damn no smoking signs. Like, okay. Um, and this is a serious conversation these two are having, right? About 
Basically, they're psychic powers. And look, Danny shifts his hand so slightly. But during the entirety of this conversation between Halloran and Danny, neither of them unclasps their hands. Okay. That's what you need to know about that. They're mirroring each other fully and completely for the for the whole duration of this um, conversation. And Danny's hands are a bit nervous, but he doesn't want to un, un unlock them, right? And here he is listening, right? And another thing that I keep mentioning, check out the under part of Danny's eyes. He's too little, he's too young to have bags under his eyes, and he's too young to have dark circles under his eyes. But this redness, this redness to me, and I see it in Jack too, um, this to me indicates sleep deprivation. Okay, I could be wrong. And, you know, I think a makeup artist did that. That's not just the way this kid looks. If a kid, if you see a young child with this much redness underneath their eyes, I, you should be concerned. Okay, you should be concerned for that kid. Um, here's Halloran again. And by the way, speaking of um, sleep deprivation, I talked about his shiny bald head. Okay, this is called The Shining. And he's explaining The Shining, so his head's... It looks like they oiled this up to me. I'm sorry. They they did they, they put something on his scalp to make it look shiny. But I was talking about sleep deprivation. Here he is again. He looks like he needs like a good long nap. Okay? And so does Halloran, by the way. Look at him. He's you know they're having their little conversation. Look at his eyes. Look at Halloran's eyes. I mean this is an older man. I think I think that Scatman Crothers was in his 60s, maybe 70s when he did this movie. I'm not sure. But so he's already an older man, but um, and he doesn't have like a lot of wrinkles or anything. But look at the whites of his eyes. They're not white. They're red. They're bloodshot. So again, is that just natural? Did the character just look like that? Or the actor, not the character. The actor, Scat McCruthers, did he just look like that? Or did they do something? I don't know what they could do, what makeup artists could do, to make his eyes look bloodshot. Y'all tell me if you know about that kind of thing in the world of movie making and, and makeup and whatever. Tell me, because I am ignorant, totally ignorant about that. I have a friend who's a makeup artist who works in the entertainment industry but of course like I never thought to ask her something like that so um here he is again it's just back and forth back the whole you guys I'm kind of I, I, I feel like I have to apologize for this but like how am I going to apologize this is three minutes of the movie I do three minute segments and what's there is there so this is the three minutes we're working with here just back and forth shots of Halloran's head and Danny's head and that's it and again in at this angle he's his head is turned a little bit more towards Halloran you can see even a little bit baggy looking under the eyes that's that's sleep deprivation that's stress okay and if if Wendy is the terror that she might be I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure about the Wendy, like, is crazy thing. I'm not sure. But if he lives with an unpredictable mother or an unpredictable father, like some people think that Jack is the no-good Nick, the alcoholic, the abusive one, and some people, you know, think Wendy is. In either case, if he lives with one or two parents like that, no wonder he's sleep-deprived. No wonder he's so stressed out. Good heavens. Okay, here he is again. And again, this is an older man with lines, not too many lines, but lines on his face. He's got lines on his forehead. He's got furrows in his brow. Um, and he looks sleep deprived too. Like what is it about sleep and, and this movie? And I didn't think to look at his appearance while he was talking to Wendy rather than Danny. Maybe I should take a look at that again. Oh, look, he's unclasped his hands. Well, well, well. Okay. And then this ice cream dish right it looks like a chalice it looks like a chalice it looks like one of those things if if you're catholic you've probably seen one of these things um at mass at church 
on a Sunday or whenever you go to Mass. I think they have Mass like every day. Um, doesn't this look an awful lot? Y'all, like, like a chalice that a priest would use during the Eucharist. Is it just me? Am I just like imagining that? I don't think I am, but you guys let me know. Take a look. If you have any experience with that or any knowledge about that, tell me whether or not you think this thing looks like a, like a chalice at a, at a Catholic church for Eucharist. I don't know. I just don't know. Um, and they're having their little conversation. Does he put his hands back in front of him again? I am not sure. But, okay, this is when this conversation is getting serious. They are talking about Tony. Okay, they are talking about Tony and whether or not, you know, he tells people about Tony and whether his parents know about Tony. There go the hands again. Okay, I knew. I'm surprised. You know what? I am surprised that he actually unclasped them. And maybe just the reason he unclasped them is, is specifically for the purpose of showing us this ice cream dish. What do you guys think? I don't know. I just don't know. But I think, you know, he unclasped them. We see the ice cream dish. Looks like a chalice. And then he goes right back to these clasped hands. And Halloran's asking him questions. And this is Danny's, you know, thinking face. Um, he's digging deep, trying to figure out what to say. Right? And Halloran... What, what I never understood was... You know, if Halloran has ESP, and if he can co if he can communicate with people who also have the shine to them, as he puts it, he can communicate with people who have the shine to them without ever opening their mouths. Then why is he even asking Danny any of these questions? Why he probably can can he read people's minds? Like him and his grandmother could have conversations without ever opening their mouths. Why can't he do that with Danny? I mean, he kind of did in in the dry goods room. It was one sentence. How about some ice cream, Doc? But, you know. Okay, here's Danny's thinking face again. He's... I think this is the point where Halloran asks him whether or not Tony has told him anything about the Overlook Hotel. And Danny's, like, thinking about it. Right? And then, ooh. My goodness, he looks concerned. Um, and they... This is more than three minutes of... 144 minute movie I think like maybe three or four minutes definitely three maybe even closer to four I don't know if it's over four minutes is dedicated to this exchange this like tennis match or ping pong or whatever this this exchange uh, between Danny and Halloran that's a lot that I mean like four I can't do the math right now but like four minutes out of a hundred and forty four seriously that's a that that seems like a lot to me. I don't know why, but they're having this conversation about the sh what the shining is and who's Tony and whatever and the, while I was doing these slides, what popped into my head was um what popped into my head was like this is an interview all right so what I was saying in my in my previous videos um, you can check them out understanding the shining parts 1 through now 11 right um, Jack has his interview with Stuart Ullman and then then in walks Bill Watson uh, he has his interview uh, at the Overlook um, and then Danny has his whatever kind of episode at, at the apartment and here comes the doctor woman and the doctor woman examines Danny and then the doctor woman and Wendy go into the living room and talk and I said that's Wendy's interview like the doctor woman seems to be interviewing Wendy okay and then here we go with this one right here's Halloran interviewing Danny so, like, all three uh, members of this family go through an interview process before, like, the show really gets going. Um, and they really, like, have officially moved into this hotel. And they're supposed to be there for however many months, right? 
Weird, huh? I, 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 am I wrong? What do you guys think? I think that Jack, Wendy, and Danny go through an interview process. Um, granted, I don't believe, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, I think the interview that Wendy has with the doctor woman is not real. I don't think the doctor woman is real. Um, I think she's a Fig Newton of Wendy's imagination. I could be wrong, but that's how it, where I'm at right now. And I think this um, exchange between Danny and Halloran might not be real. It might also be Wendy's imagination. Please don't hate me for that. It's just where I'm at right now. I could change my mind in the future. I don't know. But this is where I'm at right now. This This conversation seems absolutely ridiculous to me to me um again once again if halloran has the shining i.e he's psychic or he can he can uh communicate with people telepathically especially if the people that he's communicating with also have the shine just like he does like why does he even need to ask danny these questions you know and second these are like kind of personal questions to be asking danny about tony and what does tony tell him and how does tony tell him stuff like Really, Halloran? Really? Um, let me just continue. I'm more than halfway through these slides. Tankard. Tankard. <laughs> uh, do you see it, Tankard? And I'm not even talking about all these knives. Which is, Wendy's going to grab one of these knives over here. The knife that she is going to grab is not here right now and it's right on this 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 row of four that's like i guess facing halloran um the knife that wendy's going to use is not here yet i don't know where it comes from but never mind that um yeah tancred i'm not even talking about these knives here or these knives on the opposite side uh no no I'm talking about this. Do you see it? Do you see it, Tankard? I'm circling it with my cursor. Okay, I'm not talking about these four knives over here or these one, two, three, four knives over here. No. I'm talking about this. Look. Look at it. That's a meat cleaver. And yes, these knives technically are pointed at Danny, but I'm not even that much concerned with them. I mean, we know about these knives, but the meat cleaver, though. And you can barely see it. You can't see the handle, but you can see, like, the blade, right? And the little hole um, in the top left here of the of the blade. There it is. There it is. Yep, and it's pointed right... It's right above... It looks like it's about to chop... Danny. Okay? Make of that what you will. Make of that what you will. Now, I also mentioned, um, I think it was the last one, part 10, when, when Wendy and Halloran and Danny are walking out. This is the hallway where the chef's office is. And then down here you, is freezer row. Um, and then they turn a corner and this door behind Halloran is the dry goods room okay um so many damn interruptions i'm gonna go crazy anyway this door behind halloran is the dry goods room and it's got two locks on it just so you know there's two locks on it but anyway when when they're over here they're turning this corner okay the group of three halloran wendy and danny and you can see over here on not on this side of his office but on this other side of this this window that i'm circling with my cursor underneath this window there is what seems to me to be uh, a freezer okay it looks like one of the sarcophagus style freezers with the lid that you open up um the lid sitting on top of the freezer a lot of people have those in their garage i have one in my garage it's nice. 
it's convenient. I keep all of my, all of my, um, you know, beef, chicken, pork, fish. I've got all kinds of great stuff in there. Salmon, shrimp, <laughs> um, cod, sausages, frozen vegetables. Yeah. All the good stuff in there. And, but th th it's, it's underneath this window here. And Stanley, I told you he's a sneaky genius. All right. Because of Danny's big round hairdo. Oh my God. He, ay, ay, ay. Um, and me and Tankard are talking about Danny and he might be, I mean, we're not, we're not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe Tankard is sure, but I'm not sure. Uh, we're talking about the possibility that he might be like his look mimics um, Marvin the Martian from Looney Tunes. I don't know, Tankard. But anyway, his hairdo and his head is so big that it obscures whatever is underneath the window of this side of Halloran's office, which is that freezer. And what I'm, I'm saying that for a reason. Stanley doesn't want us to see whether or not that freezer is there. I mean, we just saw it a minute ago. If you're watching the movie and uh, the, the, during this time of the Mooney movie, you just saw the freezer under the window because they turned the corner and you could clearly see what's under this window. Um, and it's that freezer. Maybe it's the ice cream freezer. I don't know what it's for. Like I said, they got three freezers and at least, you know, we, we've seen only one, but we've seen like three doors in freezer row. Why can't they keep some ice cream in there? But I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I don't know. Um, but that freezer is there. Remember that freezer. That's all I got to say. Now, again, Danny is sitting on the short side of this table. And as you can see, his back is not like on um, the back of the chair. Neither is Halloran's. He's leaning into, but his back is closer to the back of the chair because his legs are under the table. Danny's are probably not, or maybe he's scooted up to the very edge of the chair so he can look like he is. Yeah, he, the, there's the crossbar down here that makes it more or less impossible for a grown-up to eat comfortably on this side of the table. I think this is more of a utility table. It's, I don't think it was ever meant to be a dining room table, more like a workbench kind of thing. But that's just, you know, that's just my interpretation. So they're having their conversation. Like I said, um, this cleaver, I've, every time I watch this movie, I see this cleaver and I'm like, wow, somebody's out to get Danny for sure. Somebody's out to get Danny based on that there, right? And here they are. They keep talking and talking and talking. Hands still clasped, both of them. And again, Danny's clans, hands unclasped just, just so we can see the dish, the ice cream dish. Like I said, it looks awfully similar to a chalice. That's just my interpretation. Okay. They're talking, 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 talking. Like I said, this seems to be, this seems to be um, Danny's interview. And what Danny does is he kind of turns it around. Look at these stills, screenshots of Halloran. And so Halloran is asking Danny, um, uh, you know, how do you, uh, who's Tony and how does Tony communicate with you and this, that, or the other. And then Halloran asks Danny, has Tony told Danny anything about the hotel, the Overlook Hotel? And Danny said, maybe. And I'm going to read you the dialogue in a minute from Script Slug. Okay, so sit tight. Um, and then after Halloran asks him that and, and Danny is not forthcoming. He's like, I don't know. I don't know if he told me anything about the hotel. Uh, Tony, that is. And then... Danny turns it around on Halloran. I don't know if this is the part, but it looks like it might be. And he asks Halloran, what's in room 237? Okay. And Halloran, like that, he, he's kind of shook by that. He's like, 237? Oh, they, there's nothing you need to know about 237. Don't, 
Don't go in there. Stay out, stay out, stay out. Right? Remember that? And I'll, like I said, I'm going to read it to you. And again, look, he looks terribly sleep deprived. Now his hands are clasped, but behind the chalice. Mmm, interesting. Interesting. Okay. More dialogue. We're almost done. Like I said, this is the seven, my 73rd uh, slide. So 73. Look at his bloodshot eyes. Bloodshot eyes, shiny bald head. My goodness. Now, and that's it. As far as, as far as the slides, extremely boring. Halloran, Danny, Danny, Halloran. Then the two of them together and from this angle. And then uh, uh, again, from this angle so you can see the chalice and he moves his hands okay and then you know and then again his hands clasp again and he's thinking about whatever it is that Halloran says to him he's thinking some more always oh, think oh he's thinking hard okay and then again right and then this angle like I said the meat claver and Stanley does this a lot he puts actors whether it's Danny whether it's Jack whether it's whoever to obscure a certain part of a certain room that he doesn't want you to see or be able to see clearly in that at that point in the movie but if you go back and review and look to see if you can see that part that's being obscured by an actor and see what's going on you might be surprised because that's what I've been doing lately. I've, I've been quite surprised. Okay. Now that's enough of that right now. Now I found the part in the script where this is, um, the beginning of Halloran and Danny's exchange. Okay. Halloran takes a hold of Danny's hand as Elman, Jack, Wendy, and Watson move away to BG. Is it Jennifer? Or is Jennifer the one that, that helps me with these terms? I don't know what BG is. It is that background. I don't know, but so I don't know anything about these like um, script or stage directions. No clue. But here we are. Halloran says, what kind of ice cream do you like, Doc? And Danny says chocolate. And the Halloran says chocolate it shall be. Come on, son. Son. Ooh, wait a minute. Now, this tiny little bit here. What kind of ice cream would you like, Doc? Chocolate, chocolate it shall be. Come on, son. Okay, Doc. All right, I just thought of something, another thing I thought of tonight when I was putting the slides together. Um, the person that I say, in my opinion, interviewed Wendy, whether or not that person is real, it doesn't matter. The But that person was a doctor, and I call her that doctor woman. Um... Here we go, Doc. And like I said, in my, where's the thing? Um, in the Looney Tunes video, uh, Bugs Bunny's use of the phrase, what's up, Doc, comes from slang that was popular in Texas during the 1920s and 30s. And like I said, the word Doc at the time in Texas basically meant the same as the word dude dude does now in modern usage in the United States here in the modern world. But since the person interviewing Wendy was a doctor and Halloran calls Danny doc, is Danny the doctor? Or is that an insult? Like Bugs Bunny, when he calls somebody doc, it's an insult. I don't know what to think at this point. And then he says to him, come on, son. I know that's like a what is it called? The colloquialism. A lot of people call little children or little boys son. Come on, son. Um, still a little odd in the in in the in the scheme of everything that we're looking at here. Maybe maybe that was just how people talked and still talk, but still a little weird. Um, okay, Halloran and Danny move out. Camera left dissolve to okay Alman Jack Wendy followed by Watson see huh they uh, Alman Jack went no it's Alman Wendy Jack okay um in here it says interior hotel green cor cor corridor day day I don't know what that means and I don't know what MS means but whatever 
Um, and then they have their little, I'm not interested in this. I mean, in, I'm interested in this. Okay, back to the kitchen. Halloran looking down, Cam, Cam R. Okay. Uh, Halloran says, do you know how I knew your name was Doc? And then uh, these are more stage directions. And then Halloran says to Danny, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? And then Halloran, I guess Danny doesn't answer him. Wow. Uh, he just says Danny over Halloran, Danny looking at Halloran. And Halloran continues. He says, I can remember when I was a little boy, my grandmother and I could hold and hold conversations entirely without ever opening our mouths. She called it shining. Okay, Halloran keeps going. And for a long time, I thought it was just the two of us that had the shine to us. And then Halloran says, just like you probably thought you was the only one. But there are other folks, though mostly they don't know it or don't believe it. And then Halloran says, how long have you been able to do it? Okay. Uh, and I guess Danny just keeps his mouth shut this whole time. And Halloran continues, and he says, Why don't you want to talk about it? And Danny says, I'm not supposed to. Okay. Um, and Halloran says, Who says you ain't supposed to? And Danny says, Tony. Halloran says, Who's Tony? And then Danny says, Tony's the little boy who lives in my mouth. And then Halloran says, Is Tony the one that tells you things? Now, you guys, at this point, when I was watching the movie and getting screenshots and everything, I just thought of something. I'm going to have to look this up, but Halloran asks him, who's Tony? And Danny says, Tony's a little boy who lives in my mouth. And he says the same thing to the doctor woman when she's examining him and asking him questions. And the first thing I thought of was, okay, in, in part, part 10, when we were in the dry goods room, and we saw, did we see? I think we did. We saw the cereal, Frosted Flakes. Who's the mascot of Frosted Flakes? Tony the Tiger. And... When Danny says, Tony's the little boy who lives in my mouth, the first thing I thought of was, you know, cat got your tongue. Because Tony is a cat. He's a big cat. But he's a cat. So, is Tony, Tony's the one who tells him stuff, but Tony's also the one who prevents him from talking about it. Okay? Uh, and it says, who who says you ain't supposed to? I'm not supposed to. He's not supposed to talk about it. Who says you ain't supposed to? Danny says, Tony. Halloran says, who's Tony? Danny says, Tony's the little boy who lives in my mouth. Halloran, is Tony the one that tells you things? And Danny says, yes. Halloran says, how does he tell you things? And Danny says, it's like I go to sleep and he shows me things. But when I wake up, I can't remember everything. Well, Tony's just, like, useless. If if that's how he tells him things, like, that's a very unreliable way to tell somebody something. Like, if you want them to remember it, especially if it's information that could, you know, keep them safe rather than put them in danger. Like, you don't want them to forget it now, do you? So this Tony, I don't like him. I don't know if I like Tony if this is how he tells him things. My goodness. Like It's like I go to sleep. And now, this might explain, like I said, where's my slides? I say that, you know, Danny looks, that's not a good example. He's, there's picture, yeah, here it is. He looks awfully sleep deprived. Maybe, like, that's why he's afraid of falling asleep. Because every time he falls asleep, Tony comes and bothers him and tells him things. Okay. Um, I don't know. Uh, and again, I think Jack looks sleep deprived too. And my current, I guess, um, hypothesis 
is that they have to deal with Wendy, and Wendy might be kind of unpredictable. So that's why they have to stay on their toes, and maybe they're afraid of sleeping, both Jack and Danny. I don't know. I just don't know. Or maybe, you know, maybe, um, you know, Jack doesn't seem to be afraid of leaving Wendy alone with Danny, like when he goes off on his interview. But, and maybe she hasn't really harmed uh, Danny yet. But never mind. Let's, let's keep it going. Uh, so Halloran asks... Danny, does your mom and dad know about Tony? Danny says yes. And then Halloran says, do they know he tells you things? Uh, Halloran, I guess he doesn't answer him. And then Halloran continues, has Tony ever told you anything about this place? About the Overlook Hotel? And Danny, like I said, he's not ready to tell Halloran whether or not Tony has told him anything about the hotel. And he says, I don't know. Like, okay, really, Danny? You don't know. Okay, the 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 episode that got the doctor woman called into the house was precisely Tony telling you. That was Tony's way of telling you about the Overlook Hotel. So, I guess we just assume that if Tony tells Danny stuff when Danny falls asleep, so first he has to make Danny pass out. And then he showed him, like, those visions of the blood elevator and the whatever else he showed him. So he told him something, but I guess he forgot, right? He doesn't, you know, he he he, uh, he can't remember everything. All right, okay. Uh, and he says, I don't know. And then Halloran presses him and says, now think real hard, Doc. Think. And then Danny, and I don't know what Danny's doing here. Is he, like... Does he really not know, or does he just not want to tell Halloran? And if he doesn't want to tell Halloran, like, why doesn't he want to tell Halloran? I don't know what to think. Uh, but Danny answers him. Now, he, Halloran says, now think real hard, Doc. Think. And Danny says, maybe he showed me something. Halloran says, try to think what it was. And instead of telling Halloran what it is that Tony showed him, Danny asks Halloran, he says, Mr. Halloran, are you scared of this place? And Halloran says, no, I'm scared of nothing here. Ah, uh, it's just that, you know, some places are like people. Some shine and some don't. I guess you could say the Overlook Hotel here has something about it that's like shining. And then Danny asks him, is there something bad here? <sighs> I, I'm I'm thinking about something right now. Maybe I should think about it in my own time. But something about what Halloran said here. He's not scared of anything there. He, but some places are like people. Some shine and some don't. I guess you could say the Overlook Hotel here has something about it that's like shining. And again, when Halloran talks about shining... He talks about, you know, the the way him and his grandmother did it. Communicating without speaking, telepathically. Okay. So the hotel communicates telepathically? Is that what the shining is? Like th that's 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 another issue. This this scene is supposed to explain to us the audience what exactly the shining is. But, like, if both people and buildings can do it, then what is it? Like, is it communication without speaking or, like, something else? What is going on? Is The Shining just communicating without speaking? Is that basically what it is? And if that's the case, is that just, again, telepathically communicating or is it something more along the lines of uh, a person's unconscious mind taking over. I don't know. I, 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 I seriously, I can't say with any certainty that I can 
truly understand what it means to shine in the context of this movie. To me, like I said, shining is something that either emits light or reflects it. And light is symbolic of knowledge. That's my formula for it so far. You all let me know what you think in the comments, but whatever. Uh, Danny, is there something bad here? He asks Halloran. Is there something bad here? And Halloran says, well, you know, Doc, when something happens, it can leave a trace of itself behind. Say, like if someone burns toast. Okay. And Halloran keeps going. He says, well, maybe things that happen leave other kinds of traces behind. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and then Halloran keeps going. He says, not things that anyone can notice, but things that people who shine can see. Is he talking about energy? Is he talking about paranormal activity? Like, what's going on? Just like they can see things that haven't happened yet, I guess people who shine can see things that haven't happened yet. Well, sometimes they can see things that happened a long time ago, and he co he continues, I think a lot of things happen right here in this particular hotel over the years, and not all of them was good. Okay, and this is when Danny asks him about room 237. He, Danny asks him point blank, directly, asks him, what about room 237? And Halloran answers, room 237? Question mark. And Danny says, you're scared of room 237, ain't ya? And then Halloran says, no, I ain't. And they sound like a couple of little kids here, by the way. They sound like a couple of little kids arguing about who's scared to go knock on the door of that house where the crazy old lady lives. Yeah, I used that example for a reason. Um, <laughs> Danny says, you're scared of room 237, ain't ya? Like kind of challenging him, you know? And Halloran says, no, I ain't. And he says it defensively, like, no, you know, I'm not scared. Uh, and then Danny says, Mr. Halloran, what is in room 237? Halloran, Halloran's response is very assertive. He says, nothing. There ain't nothing in room 237. But you ain't got no business going in there anyway. So stay out. You understand? Stay out. Okay. And that's it. That's the end of the um, exchange between Halloran and Danny. This last part, I mean, the whole thing is a little weird. The whole This whole conversation is very, very, very odd. But especially this last bit where Halloran says, you know, in response to Danny's question, Mr. Helen, what's in room 237? Halloran says, nothing. There ain't nothing in room 237, but you ain't got no business going in there anyway. So stay out. You understand? Stay out. He's like, this This is a very stern warning that Halloran is giving to Danny. <sighs> Why? That's my question. After all is said and done in this scene here, okay, uh, we don't, the, the stay out part is going to come in um, part 11, uh, 12, not 11, 12, this is 11, but he says it very sternly and he says it, uh, you know, because he's trying to help Danny, but what he doesn't seem to understand about children is when you tell them not to do something, <laughs> that, guess what happens? <laughs> right? What is it about that room? Why are they discussing it? Why is Danny mentioning it? Because we haven't, up until this point in the movie, like if you're just new to this movie and you're just starting to watch this movie, this is the first time that room 237 is mentioned. And it's a really weird place and a we really weird way to introduce that room during this conversation. What about room 237? 
Okay, and this is, Danny asks him that after he tells him about, you know, bad things that happen, leaving traces of themselves in the hotel. What ha wh what about room 237? And Halloran is obviously scared of that room, at least in this ex this exchange. Whether it's real or not, I don't know. I simply don't know if this is, again, if this is a conversation between the two of them that Wendy is imagining in, or if this is really a conversation that's actually happening between Danny and Halloran in the world of this movie. I don't know. But in this conversation, Halloran is portrayed as somebody who's afraid of room 237. Um, and if he, he says, no, I ain't, but come on. Um, why would anybody be afraid of a room? Is it haunted? And he says, you ain't got no business going in there. So stay out. You understand? Stay out. This is very odd. This is very, very, very odd. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. The whole room 237 thing, it doesn't make any sense. Nothing, nothing about room 237 makes any sense. Absolutely none. Does, is this even a real room in the hotel? Or is this just a product of Wendy's mind? And if it is a real room in the hotel, like, what's going on? How does he know about it? We don't. We have no indication of Danny knowing anything about room 237 until this conversation. Tony, did Tony tell him about it? If Tony told him about it, we haven't seen it. We saw Tony give him the vision when he when he passed out when he was supposed to be brushing his teeth in the bathroom, but there was no mention of room two thirty seven. None. Absolutely none. I don't quite know what to think, to be honest with you. This is extremely weird. This exchange with Halloran is extremely weird and it doesn't make any sense. And it's 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 difficult to even figure out how it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. You know, I mean me personally to me in my mind, I know that this exchange is just malarkey. This is a weird conversation for them to be having. This is a weird, you know, this is a weird... Halloran is the one who starts this conversation and starts with this topic of conversation. And it's like, why? Is he trying to protect Danny? Okay, that's nice of him to be trying to do that. But, like, the, if, he, if he knows there's something wrong with Danny's family and that Danny is in danger... Like, he should do a little bit more than just have a talk with him over ice cream. You know what I mean? Like, if he knows that Danny's... If, you know, he has this telepathic or whatever ability to know that, like, something is very wrong in Danny's home and his parents are a mess and whatever, it's unethical of him to leave Danny alone with these people for, you know, all alone in this hotel for months and months and months. You know what I mean? So like him telling him about The Shining, that's not helping anybody. That's just not. He's not going to help Danny by explaining how him and his grandmother communicated without opening their mouths. That's not going to help him. Um, giving him ice cream, that's not going to help him either. You know, telling him to stay out of room 237, that's especially not going to help him. Because 
You know he's going to go in there. Children just love doing what they're told. Come on. So, I don't know. This is a very weird part of the movie. But the thing about, like I said, um, where are my slides? Stanley Kubrick dedicates like a good anywhere between three and five minutes. I haven't clocked it, but a good three between three and five minutes of this movie to this. He dedicates it to this exchange. Let me find the good picture the, to this exchange between um, Tony and Halloran. OK, my question is why this is obviously very important and it's very important to the movie. It's very important to um, whatever's going on with this cockamamie plot um <laughs> but why and how is it important that's the big question yeah it's important but why and how is it important i have not come to an understanding of why and how this exchange between um halloran and danny is important but it is it obviously is is it supposed to just set up the movie for like what's going to happen later is it just a plot device is that is that it okay fine but like what are we missing here right what are we missing here? and i can't even compare this to <laughs> eraserhead um tankard i'm going to be watching this coming next week, this next week, I'm going to make a point of watching um, images. And that's what I'm going to try and do. And I talked about this with Exorcist Reviews, too. Um, I'm going to try and start doing, like, movie reviews slash reactions to... Not, I mean, I'm going to start out with movies that have to do with The Shining. Um, like, I might start off with M and images and... Persona, I already watched that movie, but it was years and years ago, so I'm going to have to take a look at it again. Um, the Haunting, stuff like that, so stay tuned for that. Maybe even Caligari. Um, you never know. Maybe Caligari is somehow, like maybe, um, I know that Stanley borrowed or was inspired by Nosferatu. He maybe he was inspired by Caligari too, because Caligari definitely, Tankard, I hope you're listening, everybody, uh, Caligari definitely, definitely, definitely does have an unreliable narrator, okay? Like, the whole time during that movie, we think we're being told the story by a sane person. Mmm, but we're not. Or are we? It's hard to tell, it's really hard to tell, that's the genius of Caligari. Um, but you guys, I have talked for over an hour. This is going to be one of my shorter Understanding the Shining episodes because, you know, this, this scene, it, like I said, it's important. I know it's important. I know it's very important because Stanley dedicated a lot of time to it in the movie, especially in relation, you know, compared to other things. But how and why is it important? I'm not 100% sure. I pointed out this cleaver. I pointed out these knives, I pointed out the hands, the mirroring, uh, the chocolate ice cream, the chalice, the freezer over here that we can't see because it's obscured by Danny's big 1980s hairdo, um, or actually late 70s, rather, hairdo, uh, but, and, and this table, I talked about the table, I talked about the dry goods room, the whole thing, so y'all... I'm going to I'm going to open it up and and see what you guys do in the comments. Um can't wait. Cannot wait to hear or rather read what you have to say about this. I am having a blast. I'm going to be working on the beverages video um this coming week. I think I want to do the Salvador Dali video. That non-alcoholic beverages video, Salvador Dali video. I don't know if I'll do anything else. 
and of course next next uh in in about seven days look out for part 12 i'm going to be working on that part 12 is definitely going to include danny riding around on his tricycle um right you know taking his little tour of the hotel and wendy bringing jack breakfast in bed i think that's going to be in part 12 so please do stay tuned for that uh once again i'm having a blast if you have any ideas for any um videos or movies that you want me to review or take a look at i'm open to it yeah let me know in the comments or email me or dm me on twitter or ig whatever um i might even be doing like a review reaction of something this coming week we shall see we shall see but i think i'm pretty much done for now let me know if I missed anything. Let me know if I misinterpreted anything. You know, if I'm right about something, if I'm wrong about something. I'm I'm totally okay with uh being told that I'm that I'm not correct about something. Just, you know, like I like I I don't have to remind those of you who have manners, you have manners that I don't have to say anything, but I've had some people in my comments who just don't have any manners and that's why I'm saying it. So that's that. I think I'm done talking. Uh, like I said, stay tuned for the beverages video. Dolly, um, maybe a review reaction to a movie. And again, in about a week, another uh, Understanding the Shining next time, part 12. So let me reiterate the church announcements. Uh, new viewers, thank you for being new. Returning viewers, thank you for returning. Subscribers, thank you for subscribing. And please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share if you know anybody who might enjoy this. And until next time, until I find yet another reason to talk at you, I will go ahead and bid you bye-bye. So, bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>